is essential. You can't do a routine assessment, in my view, without doing a good cover test. It's the only test that will allow us to tell the difference between euphoria and atropia. And to that end, it, it's really important to do it accurately. I always use an opaque occluder when I'm doing any binocular vision work and when I'm using doing a cover test. This allows the patient to be pretty well occluded, but it allows me to see what's going on underneath the cover. The art of a cover test is very straightforward, but one of the things I always suggest people do is to first of all check the ability of the patient to maintain fixation. It's almost impossible to get a good cover test if your patient is looking all over the place. Make sure that when you're doing a cover test that the patient fixates the target that is above his visual threshold. Start with a six metre cover test. Um, most of you will, I'm sure, do that anyway. Um, but there are some conditions that don't manifest themselves at six metres. So if your history suggests discomfort, blurred vision, double vision for distance, and you find nothing on cover test at six metres, do try and test at a longer distance. At near, well, most people think you should do it around 40 centimetres, but of course the best distance to do an ear cover test is the habitual working distance of the patient. And don't forget, you can do a cover test simply at intermediate as well as at near. So if the patient's complaining of asthenopic symptoms for his computer screen, um, do it at 70 or 80 centimetres if that's where the screen is placed. When you're doing a cover test, it's actually better to remove the cover vertically. If you do switch from one side to the other going horizontally, you can easily cover test yourself and then you'll find observing the patient's actually quite difficult because you won't be binocular all of the time. How long should you keep the cover over the eye? Well, according to Professor Bruce Evans, at least two seconds is a good time. But Dr. Barnard in his thesis for his PhD did some experiments that suggest between four and five seconds would actually be significantly better. Don't forget that if you've got a patient who's an amblyope or who has significant hypermetropia but isn't wearing any correction, then that patient will take much, much longer to click in their accommodation and to figure out where it is that they've got to look. So you need to leave a little bit more time for those patients. And beware of those patients on whom you see absolutely no movement, but who appear to have marginal visual issues. Those patients may have a small su suppression zone centrally, and the best way to detect that is by using a four prism base out test. You simply get the patient to fixate at whatever target you've deemed to be the most appropriate. Insert a four prism diopter lens with its base outwards and watch for the eye movement. Now I find it quite difficult quite often to see much eye movement when you put the prism in, but when you take the prism out, you should see the movement go in the opposite direction. So when the prism goes in, you should see the eye under the prism move inwards a little bit, and when you remove it, it should actually reverse and move outwards again. And if you don't see any movement, uh, just do it again to make sure that you, you are certain of what you're seeing. Estimating cover tests, as I say, can be quite difficult, but every now and again, I kind of recalibrate the amount of movement I'm seeing in my brain. And you can do this very easily if you ask the patient to look at the 612 line of your test chart or the Logmar equivalent. Most of the 612 line is about 12 centimeters from one end to the other. And if you ask your patient to look from one end to the other, then that is the equivalent movement that correlates to two prism diopters of movement. And some people get, are very surprised how little that is. There are a few quite interesting pointers when you're doing cover tests. According to Dr. Barnard, there should be no differences between the foria in either eye if you've got a patient with completely normal binocular vision. And that does seem to be the case. So if you get a difference in foria between your left and right eyes, you need to have a good look and find out why that is. It's worth using the alternating cover test to actually confirm the direction of the deviation. And it gives you an idea as to how bad the binocular vision problem is if it breaks down really quickly on alternating. Those patients that recover really fast, whose deviation doesn't increase hugely, um, are generally those who have better binocular function. If you're going to measure with a prism bar, which is the most accurate way of measuring a um, a cover test, although some authorities will argue with you that the mere presence of the cover bar, the prism bar, 
actually will alter what it is that you're measuring and they're probably right but it is a very accurate way of doing it but if you're using a prison bar in a patient who has a squint be very careful if you use and measure it um, using the prism in the non-fixing eye you'll be measuring the primary angle but if you use it in the fixing eye then you will be measuring the secondary angle which will then be much greater so use use the um, use the former rather than the latter for accurate assessment the speed of any recovery in a cover test has been shown to be a good predictor of the quality of binocular vision or the lack of quality but the number of movements that you see in order to recover has not been related to symptoms it's worth noting but it has less significance